Hi everyone, uh, this is Carla from Learning Matters. Today I am going to um, do a video blog with you. Um, you should be able to see my screen and the title of my video blog today is High Interest, High Engagement. What I've done today is I have pulled together a number of fantastic websites and um, resources that I think are going to be really great for both our dyslexic children and also other children and I strongly suspect there's um, one that I'm going to share at the end that will be of really high interest for everybody in your family during this lockdown period. So um, lots of you will be launching into online learning in your homes and one of the things that I've picked up in the learning that I've been doing is the importance of trying to keep things, one, of high interest, but also, two, having as many face-to-face -face connections through the screen as possible with either your um, education specialist, your, um, your tutor, your educator, um, and your child's classroom teacher. So... Hope you enjoy this video blog, High Interest, High Engagement. I'm going to take you now through some of the websites and areas that I myself have found of high interest and I trust will be of high interest to your children and your students as well. So the first one we're going to go to is this Explore the World of Wonders, Wonderopolis site. And there's a couple of features on here in particular that I just want to really make known to you. So first of all, you can come in here and um, I'm going to search for what is the largest fish. And so I do that search for what is the largest fish and oops, it might help if I, oh, here we go. Okay, it's just taking a moment to um, come up and then it brings up a whole lot of different options for me. So clearly this site is all about wonders of the world and things that are of really high interest to your children. So they can think of a, a um, question and you could help them type it in if you needed to. So let's go to this one, what is the largest shark? And wonder of the day, number 819, it brings up some basic facts about the largest shark. And if I was to click listen here, it has an immersive reader built in, and so it would be able to read those facts to the child if they wanted to have those facts read, which is really useful. But there's a couple of other features on here that I think are really great for our children, and they are the video aspect. So the site is interactive, we can listen, and we can hear the facts being read once we've searched for something of high interest, we can watch the video. But I also really like how as I move through here, these words are highlighted and they are highlighted because they then have a definition or they explain what that particular word means. So lots of great scope for us to be honing in on those areas and teaching our children about the necessary vocab that goes with those as well. So that site is wonderopolis.org and there are lots and lots of things on there that I thought you might want to spend some time learning about. You can also come over here to the print function and when I press that print function, it will bring that little article up and obviously I can print it out as well. So lots of really great functionality. It's a free site, really, really good to use. So the next one I'm going to is a science-based podcast site, and this is called sciencepodcastforkids.com. What we know about a lot of our dyslexic children is they do have great strengths and, and really high interest in these other areas of learning that sit outside just um, that direct spelling, reading, writing, and mathematics. So what I've tried to do in this video blog for you today is expose you to hopefully some new um, and just review some of those uh, websites and areas that you may have already known about. So science podcast for kids, you can see here that I can come in here, you could search the site for a podcast, but I've just come into here 
thinking about what is it that, that, that I can access that's free and I don't have to pay for anything, either as a parent or an educator that might be of interest to the students that I'm working with. Funnily enough, of course, there's a lot of information about coronavirus um, through here, but if you come here to this view all um, tab, I can scroll down and I can come to um, a whole lot of different things. Oh, look at that one, huge interest, the science of snot and how to become an astronaut. So there's lots and lots of different things here uh, that your children might be interested in sitting and listening to. So yeah, another great um, tool for you there. The next stop for us is to go to um, natgeokids.com. So this is the National Geographic Kids website. And what I did have to do here to get any sort of um, decent amount of functionality is I did have to register. So I just went ahead and registered uh, on the site and I'll just move my site so um, you can see at the top here I'm obviously logged in because it's asking me otherwise to log out you'll have a different um, tab there I'm sure that will say to register it didn't cost me anything to register for this I just went on entered my name and my email address because I wanted to explore and have a little bit of fun around what activities are there here that um, might develop skills such as uh, building more knowledge around areas of interest. Are there any activities here where I have to follow instructions and complete a little mini project? And what I found was this one that I was really interested in under um, this Cool Kids section, which was how to make paper straws. And so I thought there, there's probably a whole lot of different activities like this, but you can see I'm just scrolling down here. I really like the way this is set out for children. I like the way that the, um, there's not a lot of text here, so it's relatively straightforward for me to go through. I like how the steps are illustrated as well as having a minimal amount of text down here as well. And what we know about both our dyslexic children and those children also too that may be hyperlexic, who have no trouble decoding, but have great difficulty with language comprehension, this type of link would be really useful for them as well. So yeah, I just wanted to share that not only does National Geographic have a lot of great information about um, nature and um, uh, science and animals and so on and so forth there is also a lot of really great information on here in terms of little activities that you can do um, so I'm just going to come to this here I've clicked on this primary resources and you can see if you have a child or a student who has a particular interest area then you can come into one of these areas and see what type of activities that you might be able to to find for them and link into um, an existing place. For example, if you're a teacher, I'm quite sure that there's many activities on here that you can download and um, then upload into your Google Classroom that will be helpful and of high interest as well. And again, lots of great tips in here for parents and, and fun activities um, to be using as well. So our next stop is to jump into Doggone News, uh, which many of you will be already familiar with. What I really like about this site, and so here you can see the, um, the URL at the top of the page, but what I really like about this site, again, is that it has free access. It has a, an, an immersive reader function, so I can jump in here, and when I'm working through this with my child or if I was in a classroom with another student, I can press this listen button and, and I will be able to listen to that. But if you just glance over to the left hand side, um, I'll just highlight that for you. So if you just have a look over here where I'm running my circle around here now, um, what you can see is that I have a lot of different functionality here. So I am able to um, obviously print this passage or this article if I want to. You can see it's just taking a moment to 
come up on my page here. That text is quite sophisticated to read. So obviously I'd be wanting to be double checking that, but I might wanna print it out and read it to a student or read it to a group of students, or I might do a read aloud with a group of students and record myself doing that um, through a different function. Um, and then um, if, if you've got an older student who is doing a research project and needs to cite the article, they can do that there. But I can also share this via email um, and I can also share it to the Google Classroom. So lots of really great functionality in terms of the website. And also you'll see down here, there's a lot of great uh, popular articles that um, uh, articles that are written particularly with students in mind. So once again, on this site where I come to um, the blue text that's highlighted, if I click into here, it's going to take me and give me some further understanding about that vocab. So lots of really um, sophisticated functionality for, for our students who need that sort of backfill and a little bit more information. So the next thing that I want to share with you is Flipchat. So I've just pulled up this YouTube video, but I want, oh, sorry, not Flipchat, Flipgrid. I wanted to introduce you to um, a different piece of um, technology that is really, really simplistic to use. And the best way to do this right now is just if you were to come on and have a um, quick watch of the, this How to Teach Remotely with Flipgrid, it is another really simplistic way to um, capture yourself on video to upload that for your students and then for, to have them interacting with you in relation to whatever it is that you've posted in that video. So many of you will be using Google Classroom, you might be using Seesaw, you might be using Zoom, you might be using a closed Facebook group, um, and, and all of those uh, functionalities are wonderful for engaging students. Flipgrid is a free um, uh, digital platform that is another really great way and it's very very simplistic to use. So if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about how you can engage your students, this is really really great for recording yourself doing read alouds and then um, posting those particularly into Google Classroom. So another great way to engage your students. So um, just to recap what we've talked about so far, we talked about Wonderopolis and the great functionality, particularly for our dyslexic students with that. We talked about engaging our students' interests in science, potentially with the Tumble Science podcast for kids. We talked about the National Geographic Kids website, which is also free and has a lot of great information, activities and downloads. Uh, we talked about Dog Gone News and we've talked about Flipgrid. And to close, I want to share with you the most simplistic, but my favorite of all for today is Live Cam. So this here is literally a Live Cam uh, that is looking at um, this little, so I'm just going to move some of my tab things going on here. So many of you will have students who are interested in particular animals and they might want to learn a little bit more about the animals in their natural habitat. And so this is a great place to come to because live cams are literally live in those different areas. So you can see at the moment I've been um, in this particular one, um, the ECAD um, stream and these babies that I'm <clears throat> that we're watching here, uh, about an hour ago, they were feeding off their mum, and the lady who is looking after them was giving us a rundown and telling us about what happens for them. But I might come in here and I might decide that actually I want to learn a little bit more about the habitat of bears. Oh, I'm actually just yeah, I'm going to come into this one here. Three bears. And 
Here you go. This is taking me into um, a live cam in um, an enclosure of a panda uh, in China. So I just thought that was a really nice um, thing to share with you because many, many, many children are really interested in particular animals. And this is a wonderful way to share with them what goes on in the habitat. And not only that, I must say that for myself, when I've been pulling this information together for you and I've been looking at these, I've found this really quite, um, I've really enjoyed looking at the animals and feeling like I've got that connection. It's been quite calming. So I just thought that would be a really nice thing for you to consider including as well. So that's, that's our video blog for today. High interest really will help with the engagement of these children. And there are so many wonderful educational sites out there. And as they come to hand and we find more of those, we'll pull them together and share those with you. We wish you all the very best for your remote learning at home. And if you're a teacher, we wish you all the very best too and hope that, um, that you may have um, found something of use uh, today during our video blog and that you're doing well with um, what you're doing with planning your sessions. Have a lovely afternoon everyone.